You have any idea who you're talking to? I, I hate that, man. I can't tell you how many times guys say, do you have any idea who you're talking to? Or do you know who I am? A lot of guys did that, mostly low-level guys. Of course, I, I am. Now come with me. Not realistic right there. But he's a made guy and nobody ever would slap him, especially in front of guys that weren't made. Mm. Not allowed to do that. Never, never allowed to raise your hand. Everyone, welcome back to Expert Reacts. My name is Michael Francis. I was an ex-soldier in Cop Regime in the Colombo organized crime family back in New York. And we're going to do uh, Mafia 2. Let's get into it. I'm entitled to a little rest after that last job, don't you think? You don't, Joe. certainly have the right accent. Take me back right, right home from Brooklyn. When Alberto hears about this, that he's going to hit the fan. Yeah, there's always one guy in the back who is making no like that. Pretty realistic. Who was that? Somebody you don't need to know right now. You know, it's funny, back in Brooklyn and back in New York, these are the kind of scenes that you saw all the time. You know, back in the day, we had 750 made guys that comprised all five families. And there was always something going on. We had a lot of social clubs, a lot of places where we would meet, restaurants, places like this. Uh, you always saw this kind of activity going on. So pretty realistic. I got these phone company uniforms so we can pretend to be fixers. Fair enough. It kind of reminds me of the whole Lufthansa robbery when they were setting that up with Henry Hill and Jimmy Burke way back when. Two different kind of guys. You had the gangsters and the racketeers. You know, the racketeers were a little bit more able to earn money, but the gangsters were the ones that were setting up all these scores. Always looking for a score, a hijacking, a store to rob, you know, someone to extort. You know, so this is pretty realistic. So this is our heist. You we got two different crews battling it out here on the same score. Talking about taking somebody out just because someone points his finger at him and tells you to do it. So it seemed to me that these uh, recruits and that uh, they want to get made. So obviously the next step in that is you got to be able to kill somebody. You got to do a hit. Well, let me tell you something. It's uh, it's not unrealistic that you have a uh, a botched job like that. But killing a person because he didn't listen to warnings, it could be possible. If you put other guys in jeopardy and you didn't listen to the warning, you could be held accountable for that. Could get serious. And there's a good chance you'll be accepted into the family. After you pay the initiation fee, of course. Five grand apiece. I don't know. This seems like a setup to me, but you don't you don't have to pay anybody to get into that life. That's for sure. Don't disappoint me. Yeah, so he <clears throat> he's been in there for real. So he knows what the hell he's talking about. There is no fee to get in there. I don't know about uh trying to uh uh skin money out, out the two guys. Know about that? <clears throat> so I remember uh playing this game for Play PlayStation Three, and uh feet or uh, Joe almost choked on his dinner. Five grand? What the? F He's like, what the hell? So I find that that that, that uh, initiation fee is a lie. That's a lie. Again, boss, I, 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 I mm. come with me. Not realistic, right there. But he's a made guy, and nobody ever would slap him, especially in front of guys that weren't made. Not allowed to do that. Never, never allowed to raise your hand. So I assume That's that was embarrassing. The boss, and they were two made guys, and if that was the case, not realistic there. Mm. The guy's been warned, but he thinks he's untouchable. Basically, they're setting up a hit. If these two guys can perform, then Somebody they'd probably be proposed for membership in a life to become a made guy. You go pick up the machine gun at a high shop in Kingston. Okay. Certainly not unrealistic that a hit could be set up this way. You know, sometimes you get an order and they tell you exactly how to do it, provide the weapons for you if you need it. Other times they just tell you this is what has to be done and you go out and do it. You handle it yourself. 250 round belt, three quarters of a mile effective range, and extremely reliable. I will tell you though, in my experience, the guns that we used all the time was either a shotgun or a handgun. 38 normally, but that was, you know, a couple of years ago. I guess now they could progress to other weapons. Where were you? Yeah, what was it, Normandy, huh? A lot of my uh, former associates, a lot of mob guys are patriotic. Many of them fought in the war. You know, still patriotic. Doesn't mean that they wouldn't steal here in America, but take taxes down or whatever. But a lot of them were patriotic. I was patriotic. Well, listen, you know, there was always, especially back in New York, we had so many guys that we were stepping over each other every once in a while. That's why you had to put things on record. If you were going to do something in a territory you weren't already in, you had to go and put it on record and find out if anybody was there. Because it could be a problem if you're 
you know, infringing on somebody else's territory. I don't think you get killed for it. Normally, you settle it in some way. You know, you sit down, you settle this, and resolve it that way. But if it gets out of hand, anything could happen. Look, that's a that's a tough life. People make mistakes. There's serious consequences. So this this could be realistic. You have any idea who you're talking to? I hate that, man. I can't tell you how many times guys say, do you have any idea who you're talking to? Do you know why? A lot of guys do that. Most of the low-level guys. Hey, and my, my, look at that. I'm like, that's not scaring me. That's not scaring me. Woo! See, he's, been out, he's been out there for real. He said almost 30 years in that business. He said, uh, oh, you know who the hell you're talking to. He's like, that shit like that ain't scaring, shit like that ain't scaring him. And he's seen worse could happen i mean this like i said you're, you're always stepping over each other but most of these guys would be more low-level guys they'd be you know kind of the thugs the guys that are doing the heavy work on the streets made guys not normally would you get involved in this but stuff like this happened all the time uh, isn't this uh kids gotta learn sometimes why don't we see how realistic these characters look i, just, I feel like i know half of them just looking at them Hey, we didn't use those guns back in the day. Like I said, things could change, but not back in the day. You normally, you're not going to be shooting up a plate, but it, it's more movie stuff. Not really realistic. Party. I got some Molotov cocktails in the trunk. Yeah, burn a place down, Molotov cocktail, absolutely. Machine guns like that, probably not. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, shootings happened all the time, burning a bar. I mean, certainly uh, realistic. That happened, you know, quite a bit. You know, when things like this escalate, it always re ends up in a sit down. You know, the higher ups are going to get involved. We're going to find out what happened. Somebody's going to pay the price. It was out of hand. But this is this is the street life. This is what happens. Now we go to the foundry, gentlemen. This is Vito Scaletta. Listen, to get into the mob, you know, to be formally inducted into the mob, you got to be a recruit for whatever amount of time it is. When I became a made guy, I was recruit for about two and a half years. But prior to that, from the 50s to the mid-70s, they had an expression all over New York that uh, was all five families uh, were involved in. And they said the books were closed, meaning they weren't making, they weren't bringing any new guys into the family. The only way they'd bring somebody in is if somebody died and they were allowed to replace them. It was really for security reasons. They wanted to keep things small. But then in the mid-70s, they opened up the books, and that's when all five families started to bring in all their recruits. When I got made, there were guys waiting 20 years to get involved in the life and to mm. take the oath. So I just hit it at the right time, you know, in 1975. But there were guys waiting from the 50s, so they were just recruits doing stuff like this, trying to prove themselves. So it's realistic in that regard. I'll tell you this, it uh, certainly, bring, uh, certainly brings back memories. Goes Leo. I took the oath on uh, Halloween night, 1975. And there could be variations of it. You know, the words could be different. Uh, but basically what he said was, was pretty correct. And yes, they do draw some blood. They take a knife and cut your finger a little bit. You do have a saint in your hands, and they burn the saint. And they say, if you betray this oath, you're going to die and burn in hell like the saint is burning in your hands. And at the actual event, uh, only the couple regimes or the captains are allowed to come. Uh, the soldiers are not allowed in, in an event like that, normal. But it's a very solemn ceremony, dimly lit room like that, late at night. And then after it takes place, it's the boss that says the words, just like here. And after it takes place, we went inside and we had a banquet. We do what, you know, Italians do all the time. You know, we have a feast. But pretty realistic scene. Like I said, a few variations here and there. The family does it a little bit different, but... Uh, this is realistic. Whatever you do, gentlemen, stay away from the door. Okay. A lot of controversy about this all the time because I tell people during my era, my era in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, we were not allowed to get involved with drugs. That night, we were told if we get involved with drugs, we die. There was no drug dealing. Now, not to say that some people weren't doing it on the sly or on the sneak, but we were not the major drug dealers, we were not cartels, and if you got caught, I knew a guy that blew his brains out in a, in a phone booth because he was caught dealing with drugs and he didn't want to get walked into a room and get whacked on his own. Mm, so damn. a lot of people would disagree with that. They say, oh, you know, there was drug dealing at that time. And like I said, yes, on the sneak, on the sly. But all five families was hands off drugs who weren't allowed to deal with it. So that statement he made was very that realistic is, uh, for my era. That is nothing to play with.
that case that that cat walked in there, that 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 cat uh uh finished it himself because <laughs> he didn't want to get, get get clipped in the back of the head. He said he said, he said leave that leave them drugs alone. He he, he kept on anyway. In that bike. You couldn't buy dope from anybody and sell it on the streets, and if you did it, you were doing it on the sly. You didn't buy it. Now look, in New York, uh, Little Italy is right across the street, you know, from Chinatown, and there was a lot of drug dealing going on in Chinatown. But if any guys were getting involved with them, they were doing it on the sneak. weren't allowed to do it. Now sometimes, you know, somebody will look the other way. Everything in that life is an envelope most of the time. So if you're handing somebody some money and they don't ask any questions, then you were doing it. But if you got caught. And you were in the wrong circumstance, you can get killed for it. So uh, we weren't drug dealers back then. You know, I think I, I heard the boss say in that uh, meeting that you're going to get paid for this. You don't get paid for becoming a maid. I... Okay, well, good. I know. Is he a drug dealer already? How would he know that it's good? You know, unless he. Was <laughs> my uh, uh, <laughs> he said he knows that a lot of this is just video game stuff. He said, he said, he said he took a hit and then got all that taste. And the guy's like, how, how does he know it's good? He's like, he knows that. Bad. He said, he knows uh, this is this is just video game BS. You know, a lot of the stuff. So I'm saying, he said, some of it is real, but a lot of that stuff is either for the video game. So he was, she's like, come on now. You're not <clears throat> fooling him. And whatever he's doing, but uh, how do you know that it's good? So basically, they were just told no drug dealing, and now they're dealing in drugs. So the minute they get involved that's in the bad, family, that's breaking bad rules, business. Taking a big chance. That's bad business right there. Yeah, I mean, look. Who they mess know, Henry up? Taken boy. out, you're, you're going to avenge. There's no doubt. You don't kill somebody, or you don't hurt somebody in the family without suffering the consequences. That's not allowed. Not sure who's beating them up yet. But I guess we'll find out. Now, there was a time when a bunch of young guys started kidnapping made guys, which was back in the 60s. They were actually kidnapping them, holding them for ransom. It took 20 years to avenge and find every one of those kidnappers, but they eventually got him. The families never let it go, constantly on the hunt for him, finally got him and killed every one of them. You don't take out a made guy. You don't beat up a made guy. I had no choice. Your friend was a government informer. What? Even if it's true that Henry was an informant, you, you don't go and kill him. You'd have to go and tell our guys and we would take care of it. And uh, no question, he'd be dead. Find your choice. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, mob guys would sit around in their social clubs and plan on, you know, the next heist, the next job. Not so. Normally it was somebody from the inside that would come to you and give you uh, the information that you needed in order to do it. And they'd help plan it and they'd help carry it out. Normally there's there's a lot of planning that goes into these things. You got to be careful because, you know, you get caught, you, you go to prison. A lot of planning goes behind these things, especially a jewelry store robbery. You don't just walk in there and stick people up. I mean, that's what guys on the street do. When we did it, you know, I mean, just regular criminals, I guess I would call them. When we did it, there was always thought behind it, always planning, and like I said, normally an inside job. Hmm. Characters were realistic. Dialect was very realistic. It, it brought me back to, to my time in that life. For more expert reaction, go to Gameology's Facebook and YouTube channels. Also visit MichaelFrancis.com. And you can see me on YouTube and all social media platforms. Yeah, I subscribe to uh, uh, Michael Fran uh, Francis' uh, channel. This is um, um expert react thing. But yeah, um... He's telling the truth. He's a lot of that stuff is, is 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 for the for the uh for the video game and stuff. He's like you just can't uh, walk up in the walk up in the restaurant slapping folks, and that that, that ain't good now. Especially the guy that's he said the guy that's in the business. You can't just walk in there and do that. Nobody is walking in slapping them just because you're angry with them or something like that. He said that's, who that's embarrassing. But he said, a lot of that stuff is 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 for the game and this and that. It's just some of that stuff. Cause he, he know he's been out, th been out there for real. So he, you know the difference. That's a lot of that stuff is BS. So.